After 100 days, Nigeria recorded its index case of COVID-19. Presidential Task Force on the pandemic said it had tested 80,000 citizens for the infection. It has also built its testing laboratory capacity from 2 to 30, with a laboratory in every geopolitical zone in the country, providing increased access to testing. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF, Boss Mustafa, disclosed this as part of the achievements of the task force during a briefing in Abuja on Monday. He said that a review of the 100 days also showed that over 13,000 health workers have been trained in increasing the human resource available for case management. Joining us now is medical practitioner Dr. Chima Onoka. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. The NDDC says we have done 80,000 tests so far, uh, but they expressed concern about the inadequate testing in the southeast. What do we do now? What are your suggestions to increase the number of testing so we know actually the figures we have indeed? In the southeast, and not just there, uh, you know, in a lot of, um, in many parts of the country as well, I think a lot of people use um, the private facilities and those facilities have to be very well engaged, you know, as much as possible. It's, you know, there are still fears, there are still concerns here and there and the mobilization that needs to be done for people to be willing to be tested um, also has to be strengthened. But states have to own it. You know, there's a lot going on there, and um, it's important that states, state governors are responsible enough to own the process, to know that this is important for their state and their citizens. Um, that's, that's the only way, really, that these things can go up. What is your thought on the new guidelines set out by the NCDC for symptomatic and asymptomatic patients in terms of discharging them? Um, the virus is um, something that we uh, we are getting to understand every new day. There are more things showing up. So those guidelines, of course, are based on the more recent findings, um, which is that, you know, you don't need as, as long as um, we used to, um, you know, the length of time that we used to keep people. And so with all that, the guidelines, of course, needed that revision. Um, and I think it's it's appropriate. Um, it's not just in Nigeria. It's also the case in many other countries. So there's a lot more that is known now. And that means um, with these decisions, it's also more efficient in terms of you need less days to think about. And, um, you know, we can be convinced that those who have come out as well are free. Um, so it's fine. It's in, it's in line with the global public health practice and the knowledge at the moment. Okay, let's, let's pick your brains on the um, possibility the PTF is considering um, interstate movement of patients, especially those that um, have complications uh, for the use of the ICUs in other states. Um, how, what is your take on that? Let me not ask how wise it is because they must have thought it through, but what is your particular take on that decision? Ah, there's, um, it's a difficult one. Um, that can be happening. You know, there are many things, even people who you want to keep in a place, um, you know, relations want to come there and all of that. And then we don't have enough of those ICU beds and um, or facilities. Um, so maybe, you know, if, if we think about it as something temporary, um, that can work, but it should be because we also have a longer term plan to provide some of those things in the states, in every state. Um, and I think we've had enough time to actually push for things like that, to have in states. Um, so I don't know, you know, it's a difficult one, but um, that's what I think. I think it should be something that we'll do in the very short term because we need to have those facilities in every state. Okay, what more do you think can be done that is different from all the safety tips already mentioned? We 
are at a very, you know, a very interesting phase of of this. People are everywhere, living their lives now like it's all over, and it is not. Remember, we had conversations about seeing that citizens are prepared for the inevitable. That is, that they were going to come out to the streets to live in the streets. And we need to keep making noise, really. And where we have people who have recovered and those who are sick, if we keep talking about it, it I think it's going to help our citizens to take better responsibility for their lives and not just be out in the streets and doing all sorts. Nobody knows who, who will get severely, uh, you know, who will get severe illness from the disease. Nobody really knows. Uh, there, the there's, knowledge there's is growing, still early. Yeah, but there is a growing sense of fatigue um, from the populace, especially when um, some are even accusing the NCDC of just bringing figures on a daily basis, but we can't, they can't seem to see these people that are said to be sick. How else, aside from you know, the enlightenment, is there a need for maybe perhaps for a shock therapy to get people to understand that we are not out of the woods yet? The only shock therapy I think that they will listen to or, you know, it's when, like yesterday, there were stories about Abia State, the governor, and then there were stories about the commissioner who died, pre, you know, some, you know, some days back. That it wasn't high blood pressure; it was actually from COVID. And then the family had got infected, and then now the governor. That, from all the things I heard from people in Abia State yesterday, got people scared. He got them to know that this is real. So those who had downed tools started looking for where things were, where their face masks were, where their hand sanitizers and their soap, um, you know, so, you know, all of that, where, where they had all that and brought them out again. So we need to tell those stories seriously. And um, that's the only way it can help people to take responsibility and for us to pass through this phase in a better controlled way. I said a better controlled way because our social system allows a lot of people to interact amongst themselves. And, um, you know, we're not even believing that some things are happening. So it's just for it to slow until um, we're able to get things together. So, you know, that's what I think. We need to communicate that. Dr. Anoka, thank you very much uh, for your insights this morning. Please stay safe as always. Thank you very much.